Hello again, it's Lock Noob. If you're a picker, then at some point you're going to be taking apart locks. You're going to be gutting those locks, and when you gut those locks, for me, the hardest part is just getting the circlips off the locks, whether it's padlocks like this American 1100 series here, or things like this era, Euro cylinder with these kind of like a expanding um, moldable circlips or things like this GG uh, with their sort of like um, I don't know like the C sprung C clips or I don't know what else you got here these E clips like um, this Euro spec uh, these um, E clips here or even these horrible sprung steel clips like this and hey do you know what if you've seen lots of my videos you know that sometimes I, I spend longer trying to take these circlips off than I do actually picking the lock so I had to come up with a solution because there are a number of tools out there but none of them are particularly versatile so here is my pick kit and nestled in here in actually one of the smaller pockets but just because I want to make sure that it fits in uh, an average size pick case is my answer to that and this shiny object here is a circlip removal multi-tool that's supposed to lie flat in a pick kit for, for whenever you need it. The features are, um, and I might as well go left to right here, a large circlip remover, a small circlip remover specifically for American locks and similar. We have a grippy sort of half moon shape here for pushing circlips back on, two core holders and a circlip pry with some extra grippy teeth on here. So do you know what? Instead of me talking to you about how it works, let me show you how it works. So this has um, ears on it and you'll see that I broadened the tip of this and back angled it. It's so that it pushes the tips away. Can you see how it's doing that? And this works really, really, really well. Standard three quarter circlip, again, goes on. The broad tip is much, much more efficient at pushing the circlip out and away. We have a skinny circlip here, which actually uh, is more like an E-clip, but again, that should be no problem for this broad tip. Second tool, designed for American locks and similar. For these sort of E-clips, I like to use the, the pry functionality. You can see I can just grip it using the tip there and just pull and that will come off really easily. So this is a double euro with one of those um, circlips in and you know you really just want to use something you've got to hand to to hold uh, one end of that circlip in while you um, pry with the other end so I'm going to get that all the way around and just gently pull that circlip off And there we go. The idea of this, of course, is that it just grips one side like that and just pulls the whole thing out. So same thing with uh, the steel circlips. Anyway, once you've got your circlips off the back, what we want to do is, of course, 
take the cores out. And once you've done that, you want somewhere just to keep them out of trouble so they don't move all the pins everywhere. And that's what this hole's for. It just uh, goes on, um, on the underside of the lock like that. And it keeps it in place like this. And just means it acts like a, a T to stop that from rolling over. Same with the American lock cores. Once you've got those out, again, you don't want to leave it there for the pins to just tip out. So you can just stick those in like that. And yes, I know exactly what you're thinking. Does this open a beer bottle? Those of you who have watched my channel for a while, well, you might be thinking, isn't this laser cut? And actually you'd be right, this is laser cut 304 stainless steel. And I don't have a laser cutter. It's just that I had an idea, which started out as a little sketch on a piece of paper. And then I thought, do you know what? I, I want to develop a circlip tool. What metal could I use which is um, under a millimetre, around 0.8 millimetres to be exact. Why? It's because to get between the cam and uh, the, the body to take a circlip out, to need something around 0.8 mils, uh, 0.9 maximum. Um, so what, what do I have to hand that I could use to hand make a tool? And I thought, well, do you know what? Sparrows do these homemade um, do-it-yourself picks, and you're supposed to use it this way, but I thought, well, this metal here is a bit thinner than I, I need, but it's very, very strong. Sparrow steel is, uh, I think it's like a max yield um, stainless. I, I could be wrong, but it's incredibly tough. And I thought making a tool out of that would be really good. So I got on my um, CAD package and I copied roughly the shape of the, the pick to about there. And you can see the overlay. And I did a 3D print just to see if it all worked out shape wise. And yeah, the dimensions of the individual parts were right, but the actual tool itself was so small um, that it was virtually unusable. So that didn't work out. Unfortunately, the only way I found out it was unusable is by running a test to test my measurements and getting it cut in some 304 stainless. You can see that uh, I used the same file there to, to get that cut as the 3D uh, printer file. And yeah, this was just, just bad. I mean, I, I even thought about putting like a little um, Phillips head, flathead crossover screwdriver at one end and stuff. It, it just was bad. Um, it's partly an artifact of the, the laser cutting process, but the point was too sharp and nothing fit well in the hand. You know, it's uncomfortable to use, just unpleasant. So I up, up the scale of it and I actually ended up with this. So then we started getting something better. Still was a good size, fit in a pick kit. Uh, but again, the end was too pointy. It bent too easily and it didn't help push the circlip off. Um, you can see that I, I tried to get a lock noob logo in there. Very, very thin and very easy to snap that. So we ditched that quite early on. Also these core holders, I swapped around because there's just too little metal here. And combined with the fact that this is 304 stainless, which means that it's, I mean, yeah, you can see, it just isn't the right steel for this application. It really isn't. Although it is quite easy to bend back. Um, so I ended up with something like this. And it was relatively comfortable to hold. It was the right length because you had a, a flat bit to hold there and you could press with your finger or, or vice versa on the other side. It was, it was comfortable on the right size, but again, just wasn't 100% correct. So... We finally went to what you see above, which is, and this is an unpolished, um, straight out of the factory type one, and you can see where we ended up. And I guess you can see quite clearly then the where I started and where I got to. So a lot of the features uh, stayed the same, some didn't. So you can see here that I moved this smaller circuit remover up. I made this tip back angled and broader because there's just no need to have it sharp there just wasn't any need i made the um, grippy section a tiny bit deeper i swapped over the holes from this one so big first uh to big last so you had more metal here which makes it stronger 
and I increased the depth of the hook at the end purely because uh, this, well you can see actually the evolution of the, the pry. Here, there we go. And I just wanted to have something which wasn't too thin but could hook on and provide a good amount of strength and this final one was about right. Also the angle of this, um, I guess you'd call it like a cam with all its teeth on wasn't right and I made the teeth broader. So you know it's, it's just this kind of like iterative design. You, you really have to think okay if I believe in something and I think it's going to work and I think it's going to be good and I want it to work and I want it to be good then sometimes you just have to put that extra little bit of effort in and I hope you can see that that's what I tried to do here. I wanted something which was um, practical, fit in a pit kit, uh, was versatile that could be used on uh, you know the majority of locks which have uh, C clips, E clips um, and all those kind of things could fit flat in a pit kit, all those other features um, and I just thought it was worth the extra R&D from going to something which was going to be like a handmade uh, cutout of a readily available blank all the way through to this tool here which is um, again made out of 304 stainless but a really comfortable practical design. So where next? Well, I don't know to be honest with you. What I do know is that uh, I need to get this tool made out of something much better than 304 stainless. It needs to be made of a much higher grade like this Sparrow Steel. Um, and then I think it'll be pretty much there. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found my insight into the design process interesting too. Um, you know, this is where my headspace is at quite a lot of the time, thinking through what do I want and how do I get there? And do you know what? If it inspired just one person to have a go at designing something themselves, then um, I, I'd be over the moon. Anyway, I'll catch you all next time.